Yep. After this week, yeah. Okay, so let's start with a really easy example. And then like seven weeks. Eleven weeks in this order. Eleven. I think it's ten. Okay, so yeah. We have six weeks left after spring break. Yeah, it's Okay. So I'm given the equation 3 over x plus 1 equals 9 over 4x plus 5. So if I'm looking at a fraction equals a fraction, there are two ways that I could approach this. I could choose to find a common denominator between both sides of the equal sign and go that direction. Or what is another thing that I could do here? Cross multiply. If there's one fraction on the left and one fraction on the right, that is the easiest way to get all my terms to one level. So I'm going to cross multiply x plus 1 over with the 9 and 4x plus 5 over with the 3. When I do, I get 3 times 4x plus 5 equals 9 times x plus 1. I will distribute my values in and then simplify and solve for x. So I distribute the 3 and the 9. I get 12x minus 15 equals 9x plus 9. I subtract the 9x over, subtract the 15 over, and I get 3x equals negative 6, which means x equals negative 2. Anybody else got to get the answer, Sam? Technically, we are talking about a set of solutions. So you should put these in curly brackets. I don't require it unless there's more than one answer. Um, which brings me to another point. Whenever we get answers and we get more than one of them, we should always check to see if all of the answers work. Because sometimes only one's going to work. These are called our extraneous solutions. We've done this before. So when I get down to the very end and I get, and I get my answer, I need to take all of the answers I get plug them back in for the variable in the original, and see if they still come out equal. If they do, that solution works. If they don't, that is an extraneous solution and is not part of your solution set. Okay, so not only are we solving, but we have to check any solutions that we were to get. Sound good? Let's do another one. On your own, feel free to solve this one, please. solve it out we should get x equals 4. Anytime I get an answer what should I do with it? Check it to make sure it works. Um, I already know that 4 is going to work but let's test it just to make sure you guys are okay plugging it back in. So when I take 4 and I plug it back in I get 4 over 2 times 4 equals 5 over 4 plus 6. This side gives me 4 over 8. This side gives me 5 over 10. Looking at them like this, they are not equal. But when I reduce them, they each reduce into 1 half. 
So four did work, which means it's not an extraneous solution and is a solution to our equation. All of your homework, you will get at least one number that works. Okay, so you shouldn't get any that none of the answers work. We're gonna we're gonna liven it up a little bit, but yeah, this is the, this is the concept. Never mind, I can't speak. Okay, let's do another one. So now I have x over 4 plus 1 half equals 1 third. So I can't do what I've been doing because I have more than one fraction on the left hand side. So I have to do what? You gotta go to last lesson. And what did we do last lesson, Shane? I don't know. <laughs> We've actually been doing the last two, le two lessons. What am I trying to find between these two fractions? A common denominator. What is that common denominator going to be? Four. Four. So all I need to do is I need to multiply two over two into the top and bottom of the second fraction. And when I do, I get x over four plus two over four equals one third. This allows me to take the two fractions on the left and write them as one fraction, which allows me to cross multiply just like we have on the previous examples. And when we solve for x, we should get x equals negative 2 over 3. Anybody not getting that answer? Anybody not see how we got that answer? Anybody confused? Yes, Shane. Yes, because they didn't reduce into a nice pretty whole number. So if it doesn't reduce, we leave it as a simplified fraction. Yeah. Questions, concerns, or issues so far? Do we feel pretty good about this? I don't honestly think this one is any harder than what you did last time. Um, but let's do a couple more examples, see how comfortable you are, and then maybe I'll let you do your homework. Maybe. We'll see. Wait, is this the last example? No, we. I have six more. Oh, okay. I, we're not going to do all of them, but because I don't think you need all of them, but they're there in case we need to. But to this do them. Oh, okay. So again, I can't just jump straight to cross multiplying because I have two fractions on the left. But I notice something between two fractions that exist in this problem. What do I notice? I have two that have the same denominator. What's the issue? They're on opposite sides, but I can move stuff around, right? I could add this nine over X over here and then subtract the 7 over 4 to the other side. That's a wonderful idea. Then I don't have to do any multiplication to get a common denominator because I have 5 over x plus 9 over x equals negative 7 over 4. I can automatically put those two together. And then we can jump straight to the cross multiplying. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. um, why could you just subtract the or the five over You could have. Okay. I just choose, if possible, to keep anything grouped with my variable positive. It wouldn't have changed anything if you chose to subtract the five over x over five. So what would you like? Then you'd have negative 14 over x equals seven over four. Um, and it's still gonna have the same answer. Okay. I just choose to try and keep that positive. Okay. It would not have changed anything. And then I just go ahead and cross multiply. X. I 
I did not. Yes, I did. I did that with me. So I multiply the 14 and the 4 together. That gives me 56. 56 equals negative 7x. Divide your side by negative 7, and we get negative 8 equals x. Any questions, concerns, or issues with that? Anybody super confused? Do we like this lesson so far? Yeah, okay. Let's do another one. Yeah. 
Where did you even find it? Oh, I don't care if you put a sucker. Just don't get on my floor. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> it's just the so sucker plug. Gosh. Is anybody confused by what I've done so far? Logically, what is my next step? Everybody, logically, what is my next step? <laughs> Simplify this numerator. So that involves a couple things. The first thing is to distribute this negative into all three terms in that parentheses. And then we need to combine like terms. So when I do that, I get 2x squared plus 6x minus x squared plus x plus 10. It will look much nicer in a minute. We put like terms together. And when I simplify, I get x squared plus 5x plus 10 equals, oh, sorry, over x plus 3x plus 5 equals 3x plus 15 over x plus 3x plus 5. So all I did was distribute the negative and combine like terms. Who thinks that this looks nice and clean? Who else, who thinks it looks, still looks scary? Right? That's not pretty. So where's this really cool thing that Mrs. Duran said was going to happen? Here's where it happens. When the denominator on the left matches the denominator on the right, and I have only one fraction on each side, those denominators cancel each other out. And all I'm left with is what is left in the numerator. And then I can just solve it like a normal equation. So then here, I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to subtract the 3x over to the left, and I'll subtract the 15 over to the left. When I do, I get x squared plus 4x minus 5. We could use the quadratic formula here. You're more than welcome to. Or I could do what? What could I do to finish solving this out? I could factor it. What two numbers multiply together to get negative 5, but add to get 4? 5 and negative 1. You would get the same answers if you chose to quadratic formula it. If you're comfortable, please feel free to do that. What do I do with the factors once I get them? Set them equal to 0 and solve. And when I do, I get negative 5 and 1. Questions, concerns, or issues so far? Yes, ma'am. Huh? Yes, we still have to check it. We don't just blindly assume that just because I got an answer that it works. We could, but it would be incorrect. Because I can tell you the negative 5 is not going to work. So let's take that negative 5 and plug it in and show that it is not going to work. You're right, but let's prove it. So we're going to take it back to the original problem. So this one right here. How do I automatically know it's not going to work? Doesn't matter if it's a negative. Say that again, Kendra. This is the middle of saying. Sorry, I apologize. Both help me out. When I take a negative five and I plug it in here, the top's going to go to negative ten. But what's going to happen to that denominator? Can I ever have a zero on the bottom of a fraction? No. So that tells me automatically that negative 5 is a value that is not part of my domain because it makes it undefined, which means it's automatically excluded as an extraneous solution. So x equals 1 is the only one that works here. And that one does actually work. How do we feel about this lesson? Is it any like any worse than what we've been doing? Okay. I am going to give you guys a chance to actually work through the homework. Um, I honestly 
this is the hardest that it's going to get. So if you felt okay-ish about this one, you should be fine. If you want some more examples, they are in the notes. You're more than welcome to write them down. Or if you guys need more examples, I'm happy to go through them. But I feel like you guys benefit from getting a chance to look at the homework. How many of those um, out of eight, I'd probably say about four of them. There, and I don't think any of them take the quite this long. I purposely chose this one as like a harder than the one you're going to see on there. How about the test? I mean, no promises there. Oh, God. 